community of Jound um, on their Instagram page and they decided to kind of mini break my side of the internet by announcing that they're doing a collaboration with Bape on a pair of Bapesters that I feel like these shoes have kind of come back into the kind of cultural zeitgeist out of nowhere I don't know what happened maybe it's the resurgence of the sort of new Y2K trend going on at the moment this sort of like early 2000s you know kind of trend that kids are doing now where they're wearing Ed Hardy they're hearkening back to all those times I see people showing cool little images of Pharrell back in the day when he was in NERD Little Wayne when he used to wear Bape it feels like that kind of whole look is coming back maybe it's to do with the chunky or the sorry the baggy trousers and the dunks but it's definitely an aesthetic that i think people are leaning into a lot more you also see justin bieber doing it in a really big way but it feels like babesters are kind of again having a second third fourth sixth seventh life and it's a bit weird because it feels like the current iteration of Bape is nothing close to what I grew up with. The Bape that I'm still in love with, the Bape that I still buy archive pieces from all the time now. Not from, you know, I'm not going to tell you where because I don't want everyone to bait up, but I still buy basically a jacket or a hat or a t shirt every single month when I get paid just to kind of add to my collection. I've got many, many magazines of, you know, old interviews with Nigo and, you know, line sheets and kind of look books like actual physical books that i still kind of look at and kind of dream about from time to time i still kind of kick myself that i sold that massive um gore-tex downfield um bathing ape snowball jacket like i don't believe why i let that go such a dumb move really really amazing jacket i ended up letting go back in the day um but yeah paper is definitely one of my favorite brands definitely a brand that could basically introduce me to streetwear introduce me to the kind of japanese side of things as well when it comes to that whole urahara um culture and whatnot so to see jown basically adopting their sort of minimalistic simplistic sort of um design codes um or house codes you'd say to a bape nowadays is quite interesting because what they sort of represent when it comes to design especially when it comes to footwear collaborations is completely i won't say antithetical but it's kind of the opposite of what bape sort of were about right it was all gaudy it was really loud it was in your face it kind of you know harkened back to again take inspiration from you know old hip-hop videos and um advertising americana bold beautiful again there was that marvel collection that one was one of the best where they all came like packaged like an actual action figure like crazy work went into them right i couldn't imagine how much it cost to produce them no wonder Diego ran out of money had to sell it um but now it's kind of a dead brand because Nigo doesn't own it i think that chinese company called it owns it or whatnot so the actual mainline collection of its stuff is really hit and miss it's terrible i think there was a small period of time when Nigo left where it felt like his interns or the people that founded the company with him were still there for a couple of years if you remember i don't know the dates exactly but if you try and look at some of the look books or collections just after Nigo left they were pretty they were pretty good still then i think whenever those guys contracts ran out or they left because they got absorbed by another company they probably didn't like working for them suddenly it dropped off a cliff and that's when you saw them do collaborations with like puma and shit that's when you saw like weird rappers wearing it it just it just went to complete dog doo doo so i feel like these shoes represent maybe a sign of good things to come hopefully because it wouldn't surprise me if they told me oh Justin Saunders and Jound is now the creative director of Baby Ape or something, or one of those kind of guys. That wouldn't surprise me. That would be definitely something I could see happening in the near future because it feels like that brand is kind of um, a little bit of an untapped resource. It kind of reminds me of how Stussy was back in the day when Stussy kind of messed up their distribution. Um, they weren't really, they didn't have the, the fares in order when it comes business wise. The branding was all over the place. And then suddenly out of nowhere, they kind of decided to go back to basics. And now they're essentially, I feel like, carrying the entire streetwear industry on their back when it comes to quintessential streetwear stuff right when it comes to hats t-shirts hoodies long sleeves and all that shit they're producing stuff on such a level on such a consistent basis as well it's just scary so i wouldn't surprise me if this maybe is a sign of things to come maybe john takes over at babe maybe somebody else from that crew but i can definitely see these babes as being another kind of again another sign that things can change maybe in the future maybe it's going to come back in a big big way but the shoes themselves are great 
great. I love the simplicity of the colorways. I think Jaron, again, they don't miss when it comes to shoe collaborations. They do them really well. They do them really subtly. Um, they're done in a way where they don't do too much without doing too little as well. I feel like um, as much as I'm a big fan of all the maximalist shoes out there and the crazy gaudy colorways, I still think there's something to be said for having the ability to strip, get it down to basics and still make something that's, that's desirable without using all the loud colors. It's hard to do. It really is hard to do. I guarantee it's not easy to do this, to kind of get a shoe, um, strip it down to its pure essence and then still try and make it desirable is hard. But the fact that they did it on a shoe that's mostly white with a grey swoosh, kind of going back to the classic sort of Nike Air Force One high sort of colorway that I had from back in the day too. That's kind of the colorway you'd assume it would be, especially if it's got like an off-white or sale laces and whatnot. That's basically how that color was. So it's basically back to basics, stripped down and base, stripped down to its essence. And I'm interested to see if they're actually going to have other colorways in the collection or if it's just going to be that shoe. But um, or if it's going to be a capture collection too, it might be other bits and pieces, it might be clothing, it might be accessories. But it'll be cool to see what they do, and hopefully they go back to the archive and they just um, what they do, and they just kind of take loads of key amazing things from the archive that they've made, and then maybe reissue them and put their own spin on them. That'll be cool. So maybe we'll get a giant version of a snowboard jacket, a giant version of a bomber, a giant version of an M sixty five, a giant version of maybe one of those trucker hats they used to do back in the day. Like just many, many different things I think will definitely go well um with that kind of audience. And maybe not other again, I think that's interesting, isn't it? Thinking about that actually now. Like would the giant customer base be into if they be into it if they made like a capsule collection of bait products? Would they that be something would they be down for that? Probably not, right? You'd imagine because they like a particular aesthetic and aesthetic is like, you know, it's very Tumblr. It's very, you no, know, it's very back in the day blog spot, right? It's kind of very minimal. It's very bare. It's all about tones and hues and fabrication and textures. It's less about, again, colors, like pure Pantone shit. It's more about the hue. So maybe that will be a way where they kind of diverge a little bit. But I'm interested to see what happens. I really am. And to see how this kind of goes down with everyone going forward. But again, no dates, no kind of idea. I did see someone in the comments say something like, oh, they had rumored that there was talk that supposedly this was going to cost like 300 euros or 300 pounds or something which might make sense because i've been zoomed in a little bit on it it looks like it's completely tumbled lever upper as well and maybe i don't know if they got them that's a metal ring at the top maybe they've got like jones embossed there but it doesn't look like there's many jound in iconography pieces i can see there maybe at the back of the hill but babes are still written on there on the toe and it looks like it's all tumbled level with these tubular laces which is a bit shit i don't like the tubular laces but yeah i've heard something like 300 supposedly i'm not sure if that's true or not but if that is oof, get your bank cards out you know ask your mom for a bit of money because this is going to be a tough tough time but you know let's see what happens let's see if they do release to a wider public and we are able to kind of get them I imagine probably not, but you know, stranger things have happened, isn't it? Stranger things have happened. <laughs>